Hi, uh, my name is David Terrell. I'm from the New York area. Sorry, I didn't drive that far. So I sent you to train it. Uh, first thing I want to do is thank Lyle and congratulate General Motors and his team on what I think is really a fine piece of innovation. We're the first we've seen in the automotive industry for a very long time. And when you deploy this, and I say when, this will have enormous implications for national security, for the environment of our uh, My question is this. I actually operate a small fleet of battery electric vehicles. So we tried to ram for EVs for the last time the world tried to do electric cars. And we've made a number of interesting modifications to those, which we have found that they had a great deal of utility for us. The first one being flexibility in voltage and the current in charging. The second one, actually, the ability to take out substantial 110 volt or 220 volt power from the car. For example, if a residential owner of this had a power failure, they could plug in their refrigerator and keep it going, or their microwave, or a few lights in the house. And the third was the ability to upload. Uh, we use the EPDO network uh, that the, the cell companies offer now. Real-time data on the car and the performance as a function of the driver. I'd be interested in your comments on those three features. Is that something you're thinking about for the first generation or the second? Let me restart with feature number one. This is what I call charging flexibility. We always said the Volt is designed that it works on the regular plus but the walk also works on the and it's completely flexible. You need no devices, you have what you are used to in notebooks when you travel from the US to Europe or somewhere that has the same flexibility. The charger has the ability to work on one chain to 220. This is all in a completely onboard charging, uh, onboard charging uh, system. So therefore I think this is uh, this is not happening. This was special one on one Oh, we can be able to grid. What you see is the power of the What you see is now there is a whole, I think there is a world around the vehicle that is currently developing as there's lots of business opportunities that you can see the moment you have energy storage in your vehicle, but it's to your house and you can ask is this that the backup solution for your house. We are in contact with several utility companies. We are setting up uh, we are setting up workshops with them to understand the role the vehicle can play in that whole energy system. This is under development, but what you see is this is something that involves infrastructure and how we use it. So we have, I think, all the capabilities on the vehicle. It depends a little bit also how fast I think are things evolving around us. But we clearly see that this vehicle has the role in stimulating what's going, I think, going to be there around us. So the single is a first person that you're looking for. Flexible as well. I put into a 240 volt 50 amp receptacle with no to draw yes. 50 amps. The car knows what actually capability they have. Knows what's there. Yes. It's not the It's on the smart charger of the vehicle as the intelligence. Excellent. And then question three was the upload of data. Yeah, let me let me talk a little bit. I think Ian will chime in a little bit. One of the great benefits that General Motors has, along with the array of vehicles you see around us, not just the you know revolutionary bolt that's on the horizon. But our hybrid programs, a variant of hybrid programs, some of the things we're doing, displacing petroleum with the ethanol, the 85, et cetera. We also have in our, in our reserve things like the capability to do OnStar, which allows you to communicate with the vehicle. Our fuel cell fleet that is currently operating in different parts of the United States has effectively data recorders on them as well. Uh, we will leverage, again, as part of General Motors, some of that technology here and we will use that to help solve problems during development as we are you know, monitoring the black box of the vehicle, not to mention maybe beyond that. The OnStar also gives us the opportunity, and I'd be interested afterwards in getting some of your feedback. We've used the term internally to provide you with green mail to tell you how your performance is, how many kilowatt hours were used, how much CO2 was avoided, to allow the community of both people in the future to share this information to find out better ways to drive their vehicle, tips and the like. We think this is a, a great opportunity for us. So we're certainly looking at those types of entities as the others that you have mentioned. We're also working with the electric companies. There are too many to mention to work with, so that's a difficult challenge relative to other communications in life. 
but suffice it to say, that's other areas we're developing. And some of the things you may not see in the first generation of the Volt in the very first year, because we, you know the challenge that Frank and the team laid out relative to getting the battery right, but we do believe the Volt will be a, a franchise, if you will, that will build upon for more technology ideas and ideas that naturally flow into a, an electric driven advanced technology vehicle. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Hi, the name's Rob Neighbor. I'm a uh, member of the Electric Vehicle Association of Washington, D.C. and an airline pilot. You can say I'm definitely gadget free. You're sitting on probably the biggest gadget I've seen in a while. It looks like something I definitely want to have. Uh, I'm also an eight vehicle driver, of which three are electric vehicles, battery electrics, and two of which are GM conversions. I'm rather proud of that. I just want you to know that every one of us here who we consider ourselves early adopters are really rooting for you guys to come off with an American product that has the technology that we hope we'll, we'll see in a production vehicle. My question for you is, how can we help you make the Volt succeed? How can we ensure that we have the sales that we need to try the product to give a profit for GM? Because that is after all what we need. One of the things that occurred to us in our electric vehicle club is broadening the interest in it. One guy suggested uh, giving it to a couple of customizers, making sure it shows up at SEMA to try to get the youth involved. And another idea that I think is really captivating is yanking the uh, gas engine and coming up with an all electric version only for substantial less money. It might also enhance its capability to be sold, maybe a Volt E, something down that line. The other option, of course, would be a different size battery pack. Uh, I just wondered if that had been considered by your team, Frank, and uh, thank you all for coming and standing in front of us. That takes a lot of guts for you guys to stand up here in front of a bunch of guys like this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, Paul, I think it's, uh, first of all, there's nothing better. We are absolutely thrilled to have so many advocates for one of our products and one of our concepts out there. And, and we have found, obviously, the best way to generate interest is word of mouth. And uh, you know, all of you, as you begin to tell others, as people find out about it on Lyle's site and different things, as we do national advertising, we're advertising the whole, you've seen our home commercial, uh, you know, really, I think, a very, very well done version of you know, what the future is for all of us. Uh, it, it's going to be really important in terms of how we can sell more. The, the word of mouth advocates that we have for this product spreading that word is probably the number one thing that we can do. Obviously shows like SEMA, auto shows and different things like this are also great for us to, to showcase and get more and more interest in it. We're getting a tremendous amount of hits. I mean, I know Lyle's getting a lot of hits on his site. We added the fuel solutions, you know, portion to the Chevy.com site and the hits have been just out of this world, especially on, on Bolt. And uh, so we're, we're going to continue to do a lot of those types of things to stimulate uh, interest along the way. And I think all of you, I think it's very important that we keep you in the loop in terms of the product development, what's happening, what's going on, so you're right with us and, and can really spread that word. Because I, I think that's the number one way for, for a, a vehicle to be successful and to sell a lot. Frank, you want to take this yeah, the second? The other piece was, have you considered something that is bulky? The priority is very clear for this program. We want to establish a totally new propulsion category. It is very important that we make this propulsion category as appealing as possible to the majority of people. I'm not saying that there might be options later to do E only, but what we really learned is people in the beginning want to be convinced that this is something that is as practical, but it is saving fuel, it is actually avoiding emissions, and I don't even see the energy. But I think it is critical in this first stage to establish this extended range vehicle as a concept and to get this foot into the door of electrification and to help the individual customer to make this transition. I know that there are people who say, I'm more radical, you can go with me a step further. I think it is important to be the right step for the majority of people to establish this category. Therefore, this is also the priority of this one.